you know, Tony and I have been doing this for so long and you see this trend. I mean, the world's realizing that people are dying for what you know. If you have a year, two, five years ahead of somebody, it's like, okay, I can go through my own trial and error or I can just cut a check and condense a year, five years, 10 years into a couple days. I mean, that's why self-education's, right now it's one of the fastest growing industries in the world heading towards a billion dollars a day. And who doesn't wanna jump in an industry when it's going like this? Hey, it's Dean Graziosi, and believe me, I know what it's like to want more, crave more, desire more, in fact, have envy of other people seemingly getting ahead faster and easier. But I also know what it's like to break through that and get my first sale and go on to create multiple companies and have more success than I ever thought was even possible. And I'm so excited you're gonna listen to my interview with Omar where I go deep and share from my soul. You're gonna grab capabilities, you're gonna grab motivation, inspiration to go out there and make it happen. And if you like that, then what you need to do is go to omarslink.com. That's omarslink.com and register for the live training I'm doing with my dear friend, Tony Robbins. Last year, over 200,000 people showed up. We pretty much broke the internet, showing you how to tap into your next level, how to create impact, how to do something meaningful, and how to create next level success for you in your life with your family. So. Go to omarslink.com right now. Reserve your spot and show up live on the 27th. See you there. Hey guys, welcome to this special episode of The Passionate View. Today we have round two with everybody's favorite underdog, Mr. Underdog Advantage himself, serial entrepreneur, Dean Graziosi himself. <laughs> Thank you so you much again, for being on the show again, Dean. Good to be back, man. Yeah, awesome, man. It's beautiful to be here in Beverly Hills with you. It is, it is. So I know last time we dug deep into your story, yeah. we heard about how you grew up in a kind of rough situation, sort of worked your way out yeah. of it. And I really wanted to focus in this interview on not only how you had success, but how you've helped other people reach success and the opportunity that's available with the advent of social media and the internet of people sharing their expertise with the world. So talk to me first, and my first question, why do you think underdogs truly have an advantage in life and business? You know, if you really think about it, if you look back throughout history, the people we admire the most, the movies we like to watch, Rocky, Seabiscuit, Rudy, right? You, you look at from George Washington who helped found this country we live in to the sports uh, stars like uh, LeBron James or Michael Jordan. If you really dig into all their past, they were the quintessential underdog. They weren't supposed to make it. They didn't have the resources. Then of course, which includes money. They didn't have family support. The world thought they were crazy. But somehow, they took those disadvantages and actually turned them into the thing that made them successful. So, you know, of course I felt like that in my own life. You know, had dyslexia, didn't go to college, didn't have money, nobody in my family had money. My family thought I was just completely out of my mind and, yeah, living and a in dreamer. Yeah, living at one point right. too, yeah. yeah. And, and a dreamer, right? And, and I also looked like, what the hell allowed me to make it? I had so many dear friends, and they're still great friends, that had a lot more going for them. I wouldn't say privilege, but they had more privileged pieces. They had more resources at their fingertips. They had more capabilities to do it, but they didn't. And what allowed me to do it? And then, you know, I, I'm blessed to meet some great people in my life from Richard Branson and John Paul DeGiorio and my dear friend and partner, Tony Robbins. And, and I, you dig into their stories and it's like they had the same kind of background, uh, underdog. And an underdog doesn't mean you have to be broken, desperate and live on a street. <laughs> but an underdog means that you just don't have it easy. And I think the number one answer, obviously I wrote a whole book on it, yes. but the number one answer to me is most of the world thinks they need resources to get their business going. Man, if, if Omar would lend me, you, do you get DMs all the time saying, oh, all man, the time, yeah. can hit you me up some money, 10 bro. Grand, five yeah, grand, yeah, hit me up some money, grand, I can yeah. make you millions, right? <laughs> yeah, all the time. So I think we have this, this disillusioned thinking that um, if someone would lend you money, if someone would believe in you, if someone would become your partner, if someone would shout you out, if someone would, you know, all these different things, then that would be a resources enough to go do it. Uh, to do your thing and change your life. And it's just not true. Why, why do you think so many people who hit lotto mm -hmm. go broke? Yeah. What, do you know anybody that, you got any buddies that are trust fund kids? Nope. Yeah. yeah do you, ever, you have any acquaintances? You know, most, most of, I've never met a trust fund kid yeah. that was internally happy and motivated, right? Or because, that could sustain it. Yeah, it could yeah. sustain it, right? So many businesses that raise a whole bunch of money, they go out of business. Why? Because they had resources, but they were lacking the most important thing. It's resourcefulness. And my best answer out of you know, a whole book of, of obsessing over this is underdogs find a way to be resourceful as hell. And if, if I was gonna leave my kids, 
I have an 11 and a 13 year old and a baby on the way, yes, baby uh, which Graziosi. is awesome. Baby Graziosi on the man. way, yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you. Um, if, if I could leave my son or my daughter a million bucks, but no resourcefulness, I know how that would go. But if I could leave my kids no money, but I was a good enough dad to keep, teach him to be resourceful as hell. I know they'll be fine for life. Yeah. So underdogs find a way to take disadvantages and make it fuel. And we all have that our, at our fingertips. But I just, I think more of the world should be shouting at mountaintops and say, you don't need anybody else. You don't need someone to lend you money. You don't need your parents to give you approval. You don't need your wife to applaud you when you come home. <laughs> what you need to do is take what you have and put fire to it. And that actually becomes the thing that catapults you. Right, And if you look at all the underdog stories of businesses from Apple and Microsoft and Tesla, they were all the ones that weren't supposed to make it. Yes. And with underdogs, nobody ever sees you coming. Everybody counts you out. Everybody thinks you're a dreamer, right? You have the power of you can't. People tell you you can't. You could not do it or you could say that's more fuel to go. So yeah. I know it sounds crazy, especially people that are struggling right now. They're like, yeah, Dean, you, you got money now. Yeah, so easy, it's easy for you to say. say. Yeah. Easy for you to say. But when I look back in life, it's what allowed me to get here. And, and here's... Uh, one more thing that I'll say, and, and and you know me now for over a year. Yeah. We've had the chance yeah. to know each other, and we had got you to hang out with Tony and yes, all that fun yes. stuff. Thank you so much. Man. No, it's you're welcome. Honor. You're welcome. Um, but if you know me, you know that it's not BS that I keep an underdog mindset. You see the way I hustle. And Tony and I are going live. Yeah, you soon hustle again. like you're broke, man. I, I hustle like I'm broke. <laughs> I do yeah. because I never want to lose that underdog mindset because I watched. Listen, through the years, I have friends that are hungry and they make it, and then they get to a certain level. And they get complacent and over time they don't even realize they're slowly slipping and all of a sudden their business is struggling. They're not, they used to have the private jet, they used to have the big company and now they're trying to find a way. And sometimes it's hard to come back, it's hard to rebound. So yeah. I just, I know being an underdog got me here. So I'm gonna keep that underdog mindset forever. I love that, we'll got you there, we'll keep you there. So talk to me a little bit about times where maybe you got comfortable because maybe there's people out there who've had a little bit of success, mm -hmm. but then they've hit a plateau. So I know, you know, obviously you've, your first couple million bucks. I know you told me that you had a little bit of success and then got comfortable for a couple of months there. Yeah. Talk to me a little bit about, you know, recognizing it and then what did you do to make that shift to sort of be like, okay, I need to stop something here. I need to accelerate and, you know, start over again or, or just refresh the way you're looking yeah, at it. Yeah, really, really good question, man. I like that. Um, you know, some of the cliches or the old personal development stuff we learned, if you listen to an old Jim Rohn or a uh, Dale Carnegie or Earl Nightingale, you listen to it, it's like, oh, that's all good, simple stuff. Yeah. But I think we've actually made things too complicated. Like one of the things that drives me is making sure you have a compelling future, mm -hmm. right? You've heard that, you've heard Tony course, say, you've yeah, heard yeah. everybody say. But saying it, hearing it, and actually making it a part of your life is completely different. I'm starting to notice, I'm gonna digress and then pull me back in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what I've noticed lately is a lot of times I'll go to share something and somebody says, I heard that before. And your instinct is to go, oh, then I won't tell them again. But my new instinct is, okay, you heard it before, but is it a part of your life? And when you really look at somebody, like, it's not. And you're BSing me because you'd be further ahead if it was a part of your life, right? And, and somebody will say, yeah, I heard a compelling future is important, but Dean, how do you do your marketing? And I'll go, okay, you heard it's important. <laughs> I'll say, what's your compelling future? Literally, the phase I'm at in my life right now, I'll go, okay, stop the interview saying, what's your compelling future, brother? And I'll go, well, you know, I want my, I'm like, no, that's BS. You're telling me you heard it. You're telling me you do it, but you don't even know what it is. Yeah, like, you're not living, you're not congruent. You're not, yeah. Right, congruent. And it's not, I'm not trying to make somebody feel bad. I'm right. trying to make them uncomfortable so they make a shift in their life. But if you don't have a compelling future, listen, most of us have already exceeded our goals from when we were 18. If somebody told you at 18, You'd be oh, doing no all way. this cool shit. No way. I'd be, what would I, you say? Uh, to make a hundred grand a year would have blown my my mind. Okay. No way. Yeah. So you blew past that. So what happens is sometimes we have old goals, we go by them, and we're kind of looking back and saying, "Oh yeah, I used to be there. I'm so glad I'm here." And that's where complacency starts. Mm. And that's where because uh, I believe if you're not climbing, you're sliding. So when you say, "I got here, let me just chill," you're actually slowly going down because the world is passing you by, technology is passing you by, and there's someone younger and hungry gonna pass your ass, Yes. right? So what I believe is if we can continue to create a compelling future that's always moving. So our future always has to be like that beacon of light that's always like 10 feet out in front of us, Yeah. right? So it's like when you grab it, you can't go, I got it, yay! <laughs> you gotta grab it, look at it, kiss it, then come up with a new compelling future that's bigger and park it out there 10 feet in front of you. And it's part of the reason for that, so you're pulled towards the yes. vision more than you're just pushing yeah. yourself to sheer really motivation great, without... Really great way to yeah. explain it, you know? Um, I would say when I got complacent, what I realized is that 
and I think it's all of us. If you, you spent time with Tony, yes. right? You know that he says, we're all gonna evolve to contribution and growth. Yes, right? exactly. Because the destination, listen, I'll just be honest with you. I have a lot of friends that have cashed out with hundreds of millions of dollars. There's not one of them I know that's happy unless they went right back in the game to grow and contribute. My buddies who went to the golf club, and, you know, got to smoke cigars, the, smoke cigars <laughs> got to the golf yeah. club, bought four Lambos, got two girlfriends on the side. Yeah, I'm mean, just yeah. being honest. They're freaking miserable, yeah, yeah. right? Because they're not contributing and they're not growing. So I think if we just get disturbed with inaction, we get disturbed with not becoming because, you know, again, the old cliche, it's the journey. So it's like, all right, get two months, chill, but it's time to take and create a new compelling future, get disturbed within action, and go conquer another mountain. That's beautiful, Dean. Now, I wanna ask on that, I wanna zoom in, because you mentioned something earlier. People say, well, you know, I need help with my marketing, I need help with my funnel, or I need help with this, or you know, maybe I have a knowledge or skill set, and I wanna get it out to the world, but I can't market like you, or I don't have the, the Facebook ad spend that you might have, or you know, whatever the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the, the resource thing again. Um, when people say that stuff, do you find that it's, although the tactical is important to get better and enhance, would you say that it's more important initially to have that compelling future because that will give you the commitment yeah. to figure it out, to find the people, or is the actual technical much more important? You know, real, I, I, dude, I'm loving your question. You get, you get what I'm kind of Yeah, no, I do on, because, yeah. but I also know the evolution of my life. I mean, I think it's yeah. cool. How old are you, Omar? 27. You're 27, right? So people follow you around your age probably, right? Yeah. That demographic? Yeah, 23 to, thir uh, 23 to 35. Okay, so let me tell you, 23 to 35, I was saying, what's the, what's the vehicle, man? Give it to me. If someone would have said, hey, work on your compelling future, I would have been like, bite me. Give me the way to make money because I was a hustler. I was yeah. hungry. Yeah. I wanted more. I could outwork anybody. But I really didn't understand the power of, the, of having the right mindset, having the right foundation. I, I just didn't. And lucky enough, I was a hustler and then I, I started my own personal growth and went down this obsessive path of self-education and I got it sooner than later. But here's the thing. It, and I, I use this analogy too much, but it's so it's so easy to understand. Like without the right mindset, you could give someone a business on how to sell twenty dollar bills for ten bucks, like, and they'll come back to you and go, you know, people don't like twenty dollar bills where I live. I don't live <laughs> in the right area. My parents said this is a scam. Right? right. I don't like. There's a million reasons people will get derailed, and I've never met anybody that just had go back to lotto. People hit lotto with the wrong mindset, they go broke. Right. Right. So if you were gonna say in my 20s, how important was mindset and a compelling future and focus, you know, solution focused and hanging out with the right people and becoming part of masterminds and all that stuff. If you said, how important is that compared to the tool that actually makes you money? I, at 22 years old, I would have said 90% the tool and yeah, whatever, I stay positive, I'm a, I'm a hustler. Yeah. And now I'm 51, it's completely opposite. It's 90% mindset, plug in anything. like. When I mastered my mindset, yeah. and I, this, guys, I, this isn't bragging, I failed miserably. Just so you know, I've been broker than anybody watching because I've been like pretty much homeless with my dad. I used yeah. to go to high in school with that. Yeah. I used to go to high school with my dad when I lived with my dad, and either I'd have not, uh, 75 pennies or some days <laughs> no, no lunch money. And I wouldn't pull out the 75 pennies. My dad's like, yeah. why didn't you use it? I'm like, yeah, you want me to stand in line, 20 kids behind me and count out yeah. 75 pennies? Good looking in a girlfriend with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> So I've been broker than broke. I've been stressed up all night and I've been blessed to, to make a lot of money. Um, but that, that foundational mindset that carries you through, what I was gonna say is allowed me to go from cutting firewood, and I was successful as hell in high school, to fixing wrecked cars, to having a collision shop, to have a tow truck company, to buying rundown apartments and getting 25 apartments by the time I was 22 years old. Then I started buying raw land, subdividing raw land and building houses and selling one house. I'd sell that one, then go build the next one, sell that one, go build the next one. Then went and did my own uh, information course in 1998. I used every dollar I had in credit cards and filmed an infomercial. I went on to be, had an uh, infomercial on TV for 20 years, multiple New York Times bestselling author, 13 different companies. Like I failed in between those, but it wasn't, because real estate was the best, or cars were the best, or firewood, or writing books. It was because I was lucky enough at an early age to realize the power of, of an unstoppable mindset. So the reason I write Millionaire Success Habits, the underdog advantage, and I'm not writing the magical marketing funnel to sell a million books, is because <laughs> I can give you the magical marketing yeah. funnel. In fact, you can just go to my pages 
and rip off my funnels. They're there. If you want to sell a book, I've sold almost a million copies of Millionaire Success Habits. Go rip off the Millionaire Success Habits funnel. It still will not make you successful without the right mindset because you'll say, ah, Dean's rich or it doesn't work here or Facebook's algorithm change or they're, they're like. The ads don't have as much reach yeah, or whatever. Yeah, all that yeah. stuff. So, so for me, this is everything. This is everything. And do you remember the first time you actually took your knowledge and tried to share it with the world? I know your first foray was the infomercial. Yeah, Before I that, sure was do. there any coaching people or did anybody call you and say, hey, Dean, can you train oh, yeah, me for hundred yeah. bucks an a, hour or I something? I had a lot of friends. So I had a lot of buddies that first, I was a dreamer, right? So a lot of my buddies went off to college, which was awesome. And I knew that wasn't for me. Yeah. And when I told them I was going to do all these cool things and work with my dad, I was kind of the dreamer. But then I started getting momentum. And I started doing good with cars and doing good with real estate. So I had some buddies I was teaching how to flip cars. I'd take them to an auction, show them how to do it, and buy a car right and flip it. And then when I got into real estate, everybody and their brother. First, I was a dreamer. Yeah. Right? Like, you can't do money, real estate with no money down. Dude, come on. Rich people do that. Just be real. And did you lose money on a, for a couple of deals at first? Oh, yes. Trying to, but you were just like, fuck it. I'm just going to yeah, go I'm in. Gonna just, I'm going to try it. There is yeah, something really cool about being young and dumb. Like, naive. <laughs> yeah. Right? Naive. Being naive and hungry. Man, that is when the world happens. Because you get older, you lose a little hunger, and then you start thinking, well, that might not be practical. This might not yeah. be the right time. You, you talk yourself out of it. Justify with intellectualism. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. When you're young, you're just like, screw it. What I got to lose? That's yeah. that underdog feeling, right? Um, so, yeah, I, I taught friends, and and then I, I, I... It's funny you ask, I'll tell you. I shot a video series called how to buy a used car without getting ripped off. <laughs> and uh, I thought that was gonna be the coolest thing ever, man. I, I hired a crew, I filmed the whole thing, I get checklists and how car, this was before like a uh, fax check and all that stuff that yeah. they have now, that didn't exist. There was no internet when I did this. Wow. Uh, in fact, I sold it on VHS. That's Holy how long ago this cow. was. This is probably 1996, yes. 1995, and uh, it bombed. I sold 10 <laughs> copies. 10 How much copies. money did you invest? Uh, probably in 10 that. grand back then, which yeah. was a ton of money for me back then. And yeah. Maybe 20 grand and nothing, not even not even a blip. And was that was like, your first four. Did you ever take on one-on-one -on -one clients or try to charge people No, per hour? I didn't. You are just I sharing didn't. it. So I'll tell you my transition, my evolution in the self-education industry was um, by the time I was 25, I was doing pretty good. But I was doing it at a brute force. Yeah. I didn't have an unstoppable mindset and didn't know what personal development was. I never read a book in my life. At 25, I had never read wow. one book in my life. <laughs> now <entire>. you write them. <laughs> I know. That's amazing. Um, and then all of a sudden, I saw Tony Robbins on TV. Yeah. And it just it just spoke to my soul. I uh, I got out my credit card. I bought his everything he had off of an infomercial. This is 25 years ago. You were two, yeah. right? <laughs> and uh, I bought it. And when I started going through it, and maybe you had the same experience, I just believed everything you said. And, and it was those things that I believed to be true, but I had so many people around me telling me it wasn't. And Tony just gave me this voice of like... Power. Power, like yeah. I'm okay, I can do this. And it, 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 I was completely hooked. Like I, I, that's when I introduced to Wayne Dyer and Eckhart Tolle and, and Deepak Chopra and Coach John Wooden and Earl Nightingale and Dale Carnegie. All the and, oh my Jim God. Jim Rohn, yeah. Yeah, and I'm just great. like Jim Rohn. I'm just like going down this path. I'm like, oh my God, why don't they teach you this in school? Screw all that other stuff that's outdated. Yep. Like it's this. And if I didn't find that, I don't know where I'd be. So I got so hooked on it, uh, Omar, that Tony sold me off an infomercial and changed my life. And back, uh, so. Just realize the, the, how cool of an opportunity you have to change lives because there was no iTunes, there's no podcast, there's no YouTube, no Facebook, not even MySpace, yeah. no Instagram. I wouldn't be here right now. Right. No, I mean, <laughs> yeah. the only thing there was was direct mail or infomercials. That was it. And there was nobody teaching you how to do it. No. So you were just sort of winging yeah, so your it's way like, through but it. Yeah. I know Tony did, so I literally bought, a, a, there was a company that used to give you copies of the infomercial. I bought Tony's infomercials. I just geeked out and watched them over and over and over. <laughs> I hired a crew. Yeah. Uh, before that, I worked for like eight months and built a course on how to make money with cars because that's what I was doing at the time. It was called Motor Millions. Yes. And uh, I geeked out on Tony's infomercial. I hired a crew like the great crew you have here. I filmed it, which was a disaster. First day, I couldn't even, <laughs> I, I couldn't say two words on camera. Yeah. And I uh, got caught in mouth like, I was like, every, oh, hold on. Yeah, yeah. Every, oh, hold on. <laughs> uh, hold on. <laughs> like, yeah. I just couldn't do it, man. That's funny. And uh, so next day I filmed it and then uh, I got the infomercial done and then I had no clue what to do with it. I edited it. It was all done. I didn't know how to get it on TV. I flew around the country. I finally met somebody who knew somebody who knew someone else. Resourcefulness. Yeah, exactly. I got on TV and then here's what I thought. I thought once you put it on TV, it's like you're set. You just make money. Yeah. 
spent five grand, which was like, all right, I spent 200 grand on this whole thing. And now, okay, five grand and then 10 grand. And it's like, how many hundreds of orders? Like three. I'm like, oh, <laughs> what do you mean three? Yeah. Like it wasn't like today's, I mean, yeah. we are such an amazing place, Omar. You, yes. can, you can extract what you know, share it with somebody else and go onto Facebook in your free account and get a client or spend 50 bucks on Facebook and see if your ad works or 20 bucks on YouTube. Like those days didn't exist. And, and face, any niche too. And, any niche. and here's the cool yeah. part. Facebook and YouTube have more data than any, any organization alive. They know everything about everybody watching. I mean, if you and I talk about me having a baby right now, if I go on my Instagram, there'll be carriages for sale. Yep. I mean, <laughs> they're always listening, right? Yeah. So we know our niche. We know what we're good at. Once you unlock it and discover it, Facebook and Instagram, they already, I mean, and YouTube, they already know who to target. For me, an infomercial, I had to just cast a wide net, hope someone walked by the TV and said, oh, let me listen to this guy, Dean, and I want to make money with cars. Like, it was crazy. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it was, a, it was, I have to tell you, there was 100 times I said, I, I can't do this. I don't have any money left. And I, I was flipping houses to afford the five grand a week I was losing trying to get my infomercial, yeah, and the infomercial trying to get wow. my business going. And it was, it was deflating. And then that limiting belief story that I had about myself, I wasn't smart enough. I didn't come from the right area. I didn't have the right education. All that came into play, man. Did, you, it, did you almost give up when you had those lot, failures? A lot. And yeah. I even had my sister come up from Virginia where she lived like an intervention and sit yeah. me down. She's that like, hey man, get real. She's like, hey, you're, you're not doing, Tony Robbins. Yeah you're, yeah. Get, yeah, you're getting really, you know, you're, you're really, you, I'm really proud of what you've done, but it, you've stepped over. You're not Tony yeah. Robbins. You, but every, we're all Tony Robbins on day one. Tony's first event, he had, you know, he thought he was gonna have 500 people, he had five, right? Yeah, exactly. So this thing was failing and I was just tenacious. And then I was driven by everybody telling me it was gonna fail. And I didn't want to be that guy that tried it and was the idiot for trying, and I just kept going. Did you pivot what you did, or what ended up being the successful play that ended up making the same thing work? that I do today? I have, I have really strong marketing stamina. I knew the course was good, and I wasn't giving it up, giving up until I got it in people's hands. Because what does marketing stamina mean to you? I love that. Um, that, um, so I'll, I'll give you my analogy: that planes fly, and you're like, "What the hell does that mean?" Is marketing works. If it's not working, you're not working yet. So it's like trying to, it's like nailing two sticks together like this and throwing it and go, oh, see, planes don't fly. It's like, no, we know planes fly. You just don't have the right aerodynamics, right? We know marketing works. I mean, if you wrote a book, is there anybody selling a book online successfully? Yes, lots okay, of people. Right. Yeah. So marketing works like planes fly. If you write a book and it doesn't sell, it's because of your marketing. And it means that you might have to try 100 variations, 100 different pages, 100 different messages. And one, if you have the stamina, a hundred and second video and page you do, all of a sudden, bam, lift off. I'll tell you, millionaire success habits. We just passed 850, I think we might be at 900,000 copies. Congratulations, right? man, that's awesome. It's on its way to a million copies. One of the best selling books the last couple of years. Yeah. Nobody sells book. a million copies anymore. You get the blockbusters yeah. that do several, but. I always see it when I walk into Barnes and Nobles right there. Yeah, the yeah, it's still on the yeah. bestseller list, yeah, right? Yeah. But let me just tell you, one thing you probably don't know about that book. When I launched it, it was my first uh, non-real estate book in about eight years. So people were used to me writing real estate books. That book came out, did okay. We launched it online, did okay. And I was just trying different messaging. I'm like, and, and I took the success I had over here and I put it on here, it wasn't working. I mean, I'm not kidding you, Omar. We were at like 200 books a week online. I couldn't crack it. And I'm like... I'm like three months in and I'm an obsessive and I want to change lives. And if you read that book, you know, it's amazing. Yes. And I'm like, I need this to get in people's lives. I was an inch away from going, ah, oh, maybe people just think I'm the real estate guy and they don't want to buy millionaire success habits. Yeah, maybe and I'm then, stuck in that niche or whatever. And then yeah. one shift, like three or four months in, 200 books a week, I'm not kidding you. I made one shift and within two weeks we were at 6,000 copies a week. And that 6,000 copies a week went for three years. Holy cow, what was the shift? Just different messaging, marketing stamina. I just started telling people, listen, how are the magical money machines online working for you? Have you gotten rich overnight? Have you hit a few keypads on your keyboard and so got rich? And I said- nothing to do with the product. Had nothing to do with the products the are the same. And that's what I was gonna say. It's like, I've changed the messaging and I said, all I've done is written a book. It doesn't tell you how to get rich. It tells you how to build a foundation for sustainable success in your life. If you want the magical money machine, that's not me. And I think people love the, the honesty and bam, it took off. But here's the thing I wanna tell you, Everybody watching, the book didn't change. The words didn't change. The cover didn't change. My staff didn't change. The way we send the book, 
the printer, nothing changed except the messaging. And if I didn't have marketing stamina, that book would be at 5,000 copies, and now we're heading towards a million. Holy cow. Now, how many different variations? I know you probably, probably don't remember, but give or take, how many variations of ads do you think you would have tried okay, to that over particular? Okay, over two years, I did 187 different ads. Before one hit? No, uh, I would bet you, uh, before one hit, I bet you I did 60. Wow. Holy cow. Yeah, that's amazing. That's stamina. Yeah, because most people would try one or two or three or five. Yeah, and they say, and you know what they say? Facebook doesn't work anymore. Yeah, no, you don't work. Don't yeah, so they change their niche. They change their niche. When they and might then they have a skill set or And how does that work yeah. out when you dabble and, and you dabble and you dabble and you dabble and you dabble? You look at the end of your life like, I, I tried all these things, they just didn't work. It's yeah, like, you no, you didn't work it. Yeah, you become bitter, or skeptical, yeah. and propagate that to other yeah. people. Yeah. Okay, so then once you have, have had success, you know, at this level, obviously, you've got the marketing stamina. You've helped people across various niches. You had your phenomenal KBB launch, yeah, which yeah. there's, I think at this stage, what, it's 35,000 students? 25,000. 25,000 like 25, students yeah. at this 80 stage. countries. Yeah, Every niche incredible. you could possibly imagine. It's yeah. amazing. From fitness to real estate to everything, um, digital, Painting social. with alligators, like, yeah. him, like helping people through divorce. It's it's unbelievable, yeah. We're, it's we're really blessed. And I know I'm in the Facebook group too. I see you guys have like 150,000 comments a month. It's a super active group. Yeah. So I want to thank you for that. I'm oh, you're so welcome. I was happy to purchase that and share that with my audience. And I know you guys are also coming out with even more upgrades Yeah, the 2.0, to it. yeah. Can you talk a little bit about some of the new features that you guys have uh, in that? Yeah, we just, you know, Tony and I have been doing this for so long, and you see this trend. I mean, the world's realizing that people are dying for what you know. Like, if you have a year, two, five years ahead of somebody, it's like, okay, I can go through my own trial and error, or I can just cut a check and condense a year, five years, 10 years into a couple days. I mean, that's why self-education's... the. I, Right now, it's one of the fastest growing industries in the world heading towards a billion dollars a day. And who doesn't want to jump in an industry when it's going like this? Like, we don't want to get in the taxi cab business. You know yeah. what I mean? We don't want to yeah. try to revitalize Blockbuster. You know, it's like we want an emerging industry while simultaneously there's a broken, a broken system, which is the current education system. It just didn't evolve fast enough and everybody's realizing it now. So we got a broken system and we got an industry going like this. And Tony and I just thought it was time to let the world see that, that you have so much to share you can impact other people's lives. You get paid for it. It's what you do. You bring valuable information to the world, whether it's yours or you're the reporter of other information. That's what we teach. If you're an expert, share what you know. If you're not, share what other people know. Like, I'm not trying. That's how Tony started. He shared Jim Rohn's information. Yeah, like exactly, that's yeah. that's how. It, he yeah, got, Tony started out working for Jim, promoting his events, and then he learned the stuff, and then started sharing that with others. Yeah. Yeah. So we just said it's time that someone creates the the gold standard process to teach the world how to be in the knowledge industry. And, and to, just to digress, because I'm so proud of this course, yeah. I really broke it down. I, I, everybody keeps asking me, why is this a phenomenon? Why was it the biggest launch in internet history? Why did you have 200,000 people show up? And why is it in 80 countries? It's like, what's different? And, and I have to tell you, I didn't really think through it. It's like, well, Tony and I, we got 60 years between us in this industry. But when I really thought about it, I understand the magic now, and I understand the magic of the 2.0 version is... I don't think there's anybody better in the world to set your mindset straight than Tony Robbins. I don't care how old you are. I don't care if you're 18. I don't care if you're 75, 50, or any. There's nobody better. You go to date with Destiny or UPW. It's the greatest. They're the greatest events that have ever existed and ever will. Are people will be talking about date with Destiny a hundred years from now? Totally agree. Right? Yeah. And that's so, why people go over and over. They do. And over again. People go yeah. every three years. I go every three years, and he's my best friend. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. It's yeah. like, hey, bud, I'm here again. Yeah. You know. But here's why I think it became so magical. It's an incredible mix of the three things needed for any success. So you need the right mindset. Nobody better in the world than Tony, right? So, and this year, the 2.0, we did another three hours of training that is just off the charts. Like literally I was watching him do it and I'm like, I was writing notes obsessively. Like yeah. I were together. He's like, you want me, how'd I do? I'm like, it was okay. I got yeah. 20 pages of notes, right? <laughs> yeah. So he anchors in the foundation, fires you up to where you could, you know, chew through steel. But then... We've been doing this for 60 years. You get the real tactical strategies. How do you identify what you're good at or what niche you want to share? How do you create a curriculum? Use our tools and tools we've discovered for years. Then how do you, how do you uh, find your ideal client? And then I go deep on marketing to, through social media to attract that client to give you money. And then how to impact their lives, get paid, do it over again. So you got the mindset and you got the tactics. And then the third piece, we, now we're at the 2.0 version. We spent a million bucks on the Holy software. Cow. That is the implementation tool. Because so many times people have a great course and then they go, okay, um, do I do Kajabi or do I do ClickFunnels? And then that translation gets lost and they ever do it. So what we decided to do is mindset, unstoppable, 
absolute tactic, step by step. You've been through the course, you know what I'm yes, talking about. And then the last piece is go over to the software and now do it. Build your page, insert your video or insert your headline, hit submit, you're up. Yeah. And I think that's why we have literally, I mean, we have 1,100 videos people submitted to us already of yeah. their success. That course has been amazing. After I went through it, I had, I had been trying to do masterminds and putting it together. After the course, not only did we have a massively successful event, we raised a bunch of money and gave away thousands of dollars wow. to kids with terminal cancer. Wow. And we took people in the mastermind. We actually had a limo take us all uh, to go give out stuff to the kids, spend time I'm with the kids, you, and do Good gratitude job. exercise with it. And it wouldn't have been if I didn't have a simple system. So I want to thank you for that. Um, it was truly awesome. Oh, like thanks, I, I, I'm not just blowing smoke. I, yeah. I really mean that. So I really appreciate that. And also, I, I've seen people in every industry. So Everyone want, you could possibly imagine. I want to ask you, have there been any crazy stories? Yeah. Like, really? Even in that industry? Yeah, uh, okay. So yeah. everything, like on the serious side, like yeah. a woman who's been dying to give back, didn't know what to do with herself in a job she hated. The only thing she said she knew she was really good at is she went through a divorce and she put her kid, her, she put her daughter, her daughter or son first and ended up being friends with her ex and her daughter is thriving. And she sees, she said, as soon as I got the course, I realized I thought I needed all this other stuff. She goes, what I'm good at is helping people not do crappy divorces and hurt their child for life. Now she's running events, helping parents get through a divorce. Like Amazing, you would never yeah. think that, right? Yeah, you're think, thinking, oh, I have to be an expert for 40 years or 30 yeah, years yeah. to do it, right? But uh, one we just got last week um, that I thought was the one most outlandish is this girl uh, does workshops since she got KBB workshops on how to paint with alligators. Wow. So what she does is got all these little alligators running around and teach you to be like in a Zen place because there's alligators and then paint. I'm like, oh, wow. That is just so far. I mean, Holy cow. the niches yeah. that you would think sales and marketing and personal growth and health and fitness, all that is just off the charts. But in every niche you could possibly imagine, it's happening and, and it's pretty cool. And what are the platforms or mediums that it works for people on? Is it also for helping people with courses, coaches, uh, masterminds, group yeah, coaching, so, online. I mean, that's it's across the yeah, board. Yeah, if you look at like yeah. you, you used it. All of my friends and people that are even doing really well, YouTubers, bloggers, people with a little following, they all learned how to monetize their client base while they're impacting their lives. I mean, at the end of the day, if we had a choice between money or impact, all of us choose impact. But why choose when you can do both, right? So if you're already out there, even being a coach, love coaches, I have coaches. But being a coach is brutal because you're still in a time and effort community. Exactly. Even if you get 300 bucks an hour, still 300 bucks an hour. This is a way to get exponential income when you have 30 people in a room or 100 people on a Zoom call that you're training. Create leverage. You're yeah. creating leverage. It's moment. It's exponential, right? So we got experts killing it and we got newbies that have been in a job for, you know, they've been in their job for 18 years or 22 years and it's time for a change. They didn't know what to do and they go, oh, wow, I've been in accounting, accounting for 18 years. I bet you there's a lot of people starting day one in accounting. I could condense my 18 years into a weekend. And so we got people bailing out of careers that they don't want anymore. We got influencers learning how to monetize. We got coaches learning how to have exponential revenue. So it's, it's, uh, it's amazing. After F February 27th, we go live again. We're only going live once a year. That's it. Uh, February 27th, we go live again. We're going to rock the house. I think it's going to be... I think it's gonna be a whole nother level. Yeah, and people can sign up in the description below. Now, um, before that, I wanna ask you, um, what would you have done differently in your own knowledge business? Obviously, the KBB stands for the Knowledge Business Blueprint. Yeah. In your own experience uh, being in the knowledge business as one of the many things you've done successfully, what would you have done differently looking back? How could you have helped more people? What would you have done different in your approach to it? Knowing the strategies, obviously you and Tony teach it to yeah. tens of thousands you know, now. What would you dude, have done differently? I'm loving your questions. I, I would say, um, just what we're teaching is, I started out with books and courses, which are, which are great. But the impact that an in-person training or a, a Zoom call or an in-person workshop could be is so much, um, it's so, more impact, so much more impactful. Like, because people read a book or read a course sometimes and they're like, ah. Uh, but when you have the ability to teach people to do a training where it's face-to-face -face or Zoom, it's like you get to charge more and the person is more apt to take control, like take action because Immersion. he's learning, right? Yeah, he's not going, immersion. I'm gonna read a book every time I got five minutes. No, it's like, I have a weekend, <laughs> I'm showing up, I yeah. cut a check. And the thing is, the pe more people pay, the more they pay attention. That's just a fact in life. Right. So when they pay nine bucks for a book, maybe they'll read it. They pay 10 grand or five grand or two grand for, uh, how much was your mastermind? Uh, we had, uh... We had, we had different levels. Okay. So we had 2,500 uh, and then we have a 10,000 and 25,000 right. level. So yeah. the people who paid 25 grand, did they pay attention? 
Yes, sir. Yeah, because Everywhere. they and they follow through. Yeah, right. Because they pay twenty five grand. They're yeah. like, I am absorbing everything. I'm going to put it into play. So that's what masterminds are so magical is because you're actually helping people go faster by by charging them more, but giving them more. Right. Exactly. So I probably would have the question uh, simple, but I, I would have got to mastermind sooner. Conducting. I mean, I've been doing them for over fifteen years. Did but you I, have fears lim- or limiting beliefs like, oh, I'm course. not good enough? Or how, put, could I, how could I? How could I charge that much? The number one thing, or? just so you know, the number one thing all of our students say that are crushing workshops and stuff say, um, I wasn't sure people would pay me. That's like the number one thing. And now that I've had, now that I did it, it's unbelievable. Cause at the end of the day, my and Russell Brunson said is if you're one chapter ahead of somebody, you can condense that knowledge and allow them to go faster. And once you have that confidence and what I see as soon as people do their first event, the confidence is through the roof. Yeah. They're like, Oh, I could do this again yeah. and again and again. They just need to prove to themselves. Yeah, And we so give them the blueprint. It. Like you don't mm-hmm. have to overthink it. Yeah. One more question. Now, a lot of people have asked me this. When it comes to finding your niche, right? There's a lot of people who are passionate in a yep. particular area, have experience, uh, maybe even have experience in areas that they don't know there's a market for. You know, you brought up that yeah. lady with the divorce. Um, what's your best advice to people who are trying to find a niche? And they're like, you know what? I want to create a highly leveraged model to teach people. I want to build my own knowledge business. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I'm willing to follow through. I'm willing to take action. I'm willing to have the right mindset. But it all starts with like, if I don't have a niche, I can't do it. Right. What would be your great, best great advice question. to people who are trying to find their niche? Two things. Ask three or four of your friends, say, hey, man, what, what do you think I'm good at? As simple as that sounds, <laughs> yeah. there's going to be a common thread between your friends. Secondly, what if you have an expertise and you like it, then you should absolutely stick with that. And I would believe a lot of people, I believe most people have an expertise. They don't realize it. And when they get the course, you see it. We have that extraction process. And you see in the Facebook group, like, oh, my God, I had no idea it was this. And now I'm doing my first event next Tuesday. I have 22 people showing up. It's like. Oh my God, right? So I think there's an expertise in all of us. We just need to unlock it. But if you don't have an expertise, then what you should do is find a niche that really fuels your heart. If you're going to put the time, effort, and energy, and passion, like personal growth fuels your heart. Absolutely. Business fuels you. Marketing fuels you. Get into that. You want to do something that, that really moves you and then go be the reporter of someone else's knowledge or partner with somebody. Okay. And the last question I have as it relates to it, is as you look forward, where do you see the knowledge business going into the future? Okay, so that's a really, I um, keep telling you that, but it's true. What, what Tony and I, <laughs> I love this desire, stuff, <laughs> yeah, what we desire the most yeah. is in five or if it's 10 years from now, you go for a job interview or you go to get a loan at the bank and they say, you went to college, that's fine, but where did you get your specialized knowledge? You get, where did you self-educate? And I think that's where the world changes and it's already happening. Ginny Romney, the head of IBM, she has, says, I don't care if somebody goes to college anymore. I don't care about blue collar. I don't care about white collar. I want new collar. New collar is people who get self-education. Is it Google, Facebook? Facebook, same thing. All of them, same thing. No more four-year degrees. They want people with self-education because if they go deep on specialized knowledge, they're immediately employable. They're immediately an asset. So I believe, I believe as a big, vast, uh, audacious goal, a, you know, a compelling future is I believe Tony and I are the best two people qualified to make self-education the normal. I love it, man. And you guys have certainly done that. So before we wrap up, we have a game called First Things First. Okay. I don't know if you remember that. I don't, I'm, gonna rifle good. I'm off, glad I don't. I'm going to rifle off a word or phrase, and you just tell me the first word or phrase that comes to mind. Okay. Like just quick answers, okay. intuitive answers. Yeah. And we'll relate it to the same, you know, the same um, lineage of the questions. So uh, first question is or first uh, idea, word, or phrase, first thing that comes to mind is freedom. Freedom, money. Impact. Uh, The number one driving force. The knowledge business blueprint, KBB 2.0. World changer. How to decipher how much you should charge for your knowledge. How fast you can move the needle in someone's life. Your biggest regret in your own personal business endeavors. Thing you would have done different? Um, learn to change the story I told myself earlier. Mm-hmm. You, could su- you could be successful without suffering. Give yourself permission sooner, yeah. essentially. Best advice you've ever got from Tony Robbins? When I was 48 years old, he said to me, you're heading towards 50s, brother. Who are you going to become in your 50s? He didn't ask me what I was going to achieve, what I was going to do. He asked me, who, what, who, was, the, who was I going to become? And that's changed the game for me. Your wife, Lisa. Yeah. Love of my life. Baby Graziosi on the way. Can't wait. (laughs) Um, The legacy of Dean Graziosi when all is said and done. Never stopped. Impact. 
it is uh, it is what will drive all of us till we're a hundred. And then passion. Uh, passion is uh, that's a good one because passion can be overrated, but passion can also be the thing that's that compelling future that you have. And then the last one is your advice to somebody watching this who's inspired, lit up, knows they have something inside, wants to do more, but is in maybe a little bit of a place of yeah. paralysis, whether they're successful or not. What would be your best advice to somebody watching this as soon as they finish this? What should they ask themselves? What should they do? What would be your best advice for somebody who sees your success yeah. and wants to replicate yeah. it? In how, how fast has the last two years gone by, last five years? The next five years is going to go even faster. I'm 51 right now. Five years is like a year to me right now. It's like this. My daughter was born yesterday. She's 13. It goes so fast. The biggest regret in your life you'll have is looking back at the end of your life and knowing you didn't go for it. Start today. Like do something this very moment. Make a move. Say yes to something you should have said yes to a long time ago. Say no to something you should have said no to a long time ago. And uh, just start movement. Start momentum. I love that. Thank you so much for being on the show today, Dean. And uh, appreciate it. I hope you guys all show up February 27th. It's going to be something pretty special. Awesome, man. We'll be there. And you guys can check that out in the description below. Till next time, live strong, live with passion. We'll see you guys on the next episode. If you guys enjoyed that video, be sure to hit that subscribe button right now because every week we bring you the very best in personal development content, interviews, and insights to help inspire you to take your life and your dreams and make them a reality. And also, if you want to know how to book dream guests the same way I have, you can check the link below for my top three secrets. So if you have a podcast or a show or whatever it is and you want to collaborate with them, if you click that link below, I'll give you those top three secrets to help you get in touch with anybody. And also, don't forget that the Passionate View is available on media platforms as well. So you can subscribe to the podcast. And until next time, thank you for being one of the passionate few.